Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and I'm here again for this very long video which is called pens for some month and today we are seeing the pens for July 2020. This video comes a little bit late. We are just we are a couple some days into the month of July, but some other videos uh, got into the way and so I didn't have the time to post this. Just before I start, I want to uh, warn you that this is a very long video because I will show, show you all the pens I have inked for this month. And I have 34, so quite a lot again. I'm trying to uh, reduce the numbers, but it's very hard. Mostly because I'm most of my time at home, working from home, so I can have all the pens around, all the inks that I have. And I have lots of reviews to make, I have pens on loan, so I really have lots of stuff around and I want to, to be able to use them, to enjoy them. It's my way of dealing with this pandemic thing, is to be able to play more with my favorite toys, pens. Also, before I start, I just want to say something else, that I'm quite happy for the way, or about the way, the pen community is going. I think that this kind of community, the videos that we make, the groups on Facebook, the posts, the, the photos on Instagram, are very nice and they allow us to keep our minds sane when we are dealing with these very hard times. And I have to say that I'm quite happy because I have seen some new people on YouTube making videos. I showed, I, I, I shared some time ago uh, the YouTube channel of a friend, a Portuguese friend that I really enjoy and he's starting his YouTube uh, channel and he's called Inky Nib, The Inky Nib, so you can search him and I'm very happy to see someone younger than I am working on pens and making his videos and showing his way of doing things. Also, I am very very surprised because today there was a, a new YouTube channel that was launched. It was previously on Instagram but now it was officially launched launched and the the name is Little Pen Girl and we have we are talking about a young girl of 18 of 8 years old just and she is making pen reviews and I think that is really awesome. So I think the continuity of this hobby is assured because we are having a little girl of eight years old making pen review. So I will ask you to visit her YouTube channel because I'm sure she will be very happy if, their subs if her subscribers will go up. So I think this is really nice. Also, she's a girl and this is mainly a hobby for male. I'm not sure if this is for or just men are more used to make videos, but we have some women working on pens and that's nice. And this is just a very young girl. I'm very happy. So visit her uh, channel. I will put the links both for the Inky Nib and for the Little Pen Girl on the description. And now let's start because we have 34 pens on the way. And let's start with the first pen. The first pen is a pen that I have inked continuously since I received it. And it was a long time ago. I don't remember if it was last year or the year before. This is a pen that I really, really, really enjoy. This is the Netuno. And let's just start writing, it's better. This is the Netuno 1911 
black sands and it has waterman violet inside this pen has an f nib and it is a wonderful pen it writes wonderfully and i have to say this is one of my favorite pens ever this brand Netuno 1911, I have reviewed this pen already. This pen um, is, was made, was created by uh, Nino Marino, which has a very long history on fountain pen world, and he made this wonderful model. I, I'm talking with him about making kind of a special edition, and I would love to see this pen in some nice variation, but if that goes through, then I will let you know more. I really like this pen, one of my favorite ever. It has some vintage touch to it, which is interesting. The next pen is a pen that is also inked since I got it. This pen came from, uh, from Czech Republic and this pen is called Penteo Bonita Oversize black this is a very big pen it has an f nib also and inside it has the mont blanc leo tolstoy and it has a simple yovo nib which is nice and performs well but what is the most interesting part of this pen we are not talking about the nib because the nib is Kind of a generic Yovo nib. I'm talking about the craftsmanship of making such a pen. This is so well done, so well polished, so perfect that I have to say that I enjoy this pen a lot. Very beautiful, made of ebonite, very light but very big and very comfortable. I think this is a very nice pen that I kind of protect. I don't go out with this pen because I don't really want to ruin anything or scratch it. It is a wonderful pen. I really enjoy it. Now, let's go to another one. This little thing. I, I will say that about every pen. I love this pen because it is so small and it's made of copper. I love copper pens. I love Caveco. This is a Caveco Lilliput. But it's not the best pocket pen because you have to unscrew the cap, some turns to do it, and you have to screw the cap back on the, on the end of the barrel to have it posted, otherwise it will be too small or too short. But it is quite a good pen, writes very well, and it develops a very beautiful patina. So it is an interesting pen that I have every day with me if I go out, of course, in my backpack, I have a Max Edition pouch. I have showed you that pouch before, where I have this pen all the time. It has a perfect seal on the cap, it never dries, it is really, it is really good pen. So this is the Caveco Lilliput Copper, also with the F nib, yes, I am an F nib guy with this is so good that i put something in inside which is an ink mix whatever inks that i have had remaining i mix them and put inside this pen and it works well and it is it's not a, a pen with which i write a lot a lot but it is a i would say a backup pen that it's always there ready to to go on service the next pen is my real EDC pen. I carry this pen every day on my jeans pocket, if I wear jeans, and this is the Caveco. Oh, I missed something. Caveco AL Sport Stone Washed Blue and this is also an F nib and it has inside the Parker Quink Black. 
And this pen, because it has this kind of finish, stone washed, it's like previously worn. I really love this pen, I have it all the time. It is very easy to deploy and start writing with it. And it really is my everyday carry pen. It's on my pocket every day since a lot of time. I have this and this is something that I can rely on for taking notes. So this is my primary pen for everyday use and to really put is my backup pen. And now we'll go to another Caveco, of course. And the next Caveco pen is this interesting color, which is the coral with a guilloche pattern. I've showed you the review of this pen also. I will put links for the reviews and for the stores for every pen that I already reviewed and for every pen that will be available on any store or at eBay. And let's put it here. This is the Caveco. Oh, how, we, how is this called? The classic sport coral edition. I think it's running out of ink. Coral by Fontoplumo and it has KWZ Monarch ink inside which is also an ink that is an exclusive for Fontoplumo. Yes, it's out of ink, that's why it, skip, it, it skips, it never skips, it's just doing that because it's out of ink, I never noticed. So this is one pen less that I'll have, you, have to show you next month. And it has a fine nib and it writes quite well and quite wet. My finger is already dirty, that's why the smudge is dirty. This is an interesting color and I think I said it, it's also um, a special edition for Fontoplumo. And you see there, Coral by Fontoplumo. And keeping with Cavecos, I have here another one. This is the Caveco, the Caveco Sport, and this is the Collector's Edition, a pen that was a special pen that was thought within a group of Caveco collectors and users that we have on, on Facebook. It is a color similar to the Fontoplume one, but more bright. Uh, I would say it is almost a fluorescent shade of the same coral color. And this is... This is the Caveco. This is a Skyline, because it has Chrome Trim. Skyline Sport Collectors Edition also with an F nib and it has the diamine or diamine ink vent calendar solstice. This is a wonderful, wonderful color of ink that I really enjoy. My favorite ink that on that, uh, on that calendar. This pen is just a preview, it's not yet on stores, so you can search them because it is already on some stores, but not yet available. Um, then another Caveco. Yes, I always have lots of Caveco pens, one of my favorite brands, and this is the Caveco Supra in Steel. Today I cannot I cannot go with the, the dots, I'm going all the way. I, I cannot make a straight line, I don't know why. I know, that's because I am myself. I'm like this. This also has a fine nib. Deck, I find that the number 6 nib of Caveco pen has some more line variation than the number 5. And this pen has the Pelican Edelstein Aquamarine and this pen I have to say that 
it, it is a very nice pen. I had the, the two versions, the brass one and the and the steel one, and he says this can take a long international cartridge or converter, or it can take two inside, or if you want, you can just remove the, the end part and have a shorter pen if you prefer. So I think this pen is really interesting, versatile, and I enjoy it a lot. Okay, and now the Caveco are over and we'll start, we'll go to another brand. This, this brand is from Germany and this is a Senator President. And Senator pens are quite interesting. This one has a steel nib. There are versions of it with gold nib, also an F nib. And Senator President with F nib and the ink it has inside is, let me check my notes, diamine or diamine, I'm not sure, pumpkin, which is a bright orange color. And this pen has some feedback, I'm not sure if you could, hear, if you could hear it. It is more on the dry side, but it is a very nice pen, piston filler, and it is a pen from, of the same size as a Montblanc 149. The next pen, we jump from Germany to United States, and on the United States we have a brand that has a white dot, and with white dot we are talking about a Schiffer pen. And this is the Schiffer Prelude Matte Gunmetal. And this one also has a fine nib. And the ink on this one, in this one, is Diamine Mon Bodos. Head. A very dark, interesting looking purple color. And from Schiffer, we will keep ourselves on the United States. And this is a Caras Costumes pen. I also have this pen for a long time. It has a broad nib that it's not one of my favorite kind of nibs, I don't like broad nibs, but it is a pen that has a very broad nib, it's very forgiving, it's very well made, very sturdy, I can take it everywhere. So this is another of those pens where I put the remains of some almost empty cartridges and this is always with and some ink mix that I use for just some notes. And this is the Caras Customs. K and it has, I forgot, a broad nib and inside an ink mix. I think it is a good performing pen. It has a very nice, interesting aspect and I got it of, by a giveaway from the brand, which is interesting. And now Will we change country? No, we will stay at the United States. And we'll go to another American brand. And it is Cross ATX Matte Chrome. And it has, oops, I forgot to show you the nib. There, it is also, uh, this one is a medium nib, okay, now you can see it, with medium nib, and the ink is Diamine Aqua Lagoon. And this is how wet this pen performs. This pen is 
a real good performer. I think it's quite an interesting pen and not that expensive. And now we'll go to another that was an American brand, but this is a, an English pen. And this is the Parker 25, which is a very strange model by Parker with this kind of nib, with no breather hole, a very strange shape, and a very strange end of the barrel, but perfect if you post it. It was designed to look better posted than unposted. And it is the Parker 25 steel and blue, because the this and this and this is blue. And the nib on this one I don't really show, yes I know, it is an M nib and it has, oops, the lines are all. This is also an ink mix. This was a pen very inexpensive from a used stuff store, it writes well and I have these inked with some ink mix all the time because it just it is just a good writer. And keeping ourselves into the same previously American pen, let's go with another pen from the UK. This is the one of my favorite pens ever, and this is a Parker 45 lighter with an F nib and it has the beautiful Pelican Edelstein smoky quartz and I love the ink, I love the pen, this is one of the best pens ever made in my opinion, I really need to make a review of this one because I, I love this pen, I love this model, I think it is an excellent concept and it is discontinued now, unfortunately, but you can get it quite inexpensively in, in used condition or you can get new ones, not the original ones, but Chinese replicas of this pen and they are very inexpensive, it's called the Moonman 80 or Moonman 80s. It, they are very good pens. I really enjoy it and I love this pen. I When I find some of these pens very inexpensive on flea markets or any other old stuff store, I always buy them because I like it. So this is one of my favorite pens with one of my favorite inks and you can see some pattern here because brown ink, brown ink, I have other colors there but brown inks are my favorite kind of ink and so I, I really enjoy it. And now let's stay with the same brand, but now with production in France. And this is the a Parker Lufold. I love this pen, also one of my favorite pens. Today I have a couple of pens that I really love. This is the Parker Centennial Lufold. This one has such a big name that I have to check. Classic Big Red. I cannot go along with the lines, I, I, I don't understand myself today. Uh, with a fine nib. And inside it has the Parker Vintage, pen, vintage Ink Quink Red. I cannot say that I love that ink, it's just a red ink, but I really love this pen. This is a pen that I like a lot and this was the first pen that I bought at um, Apple Boom and I really enjoyed the service and the brand and the store and so on. That's why then I started the collaboration with them, but this was the first pen that I got from them and it was a, a purchase. Now, one of my Favorite pens, also one of the pens that I wished I had for a long time, is this Visconti. This is an Homo sapiens pen. I wanted to have one. I would not pay the price that it 
costs because I think it's too much and there were and the quality control problems are known with the Visconti so I could get one with an exchange from a friend from Brazil and I know exactly the problems or the virtues of this pen so I bought it and I exchanged with him for a Monte Grappa and so this is the Visconti and I'm very happy to have this pen a Visconti Homo sapiens bronze age oversize with this is a fine nib also the palladium nib the older palladium nib with Parker Quink Black And this is a wonderful, wonderful writer. Wet, it has some uh, softness to the nib, quite interesting. The Parker Quink Black is an ink that you'll see a lot today. And I usually say, you will not see lots of green inks today. But I usually say that my favorite inks are brown. I love brown ink. Brown, green and Quink Black. I just use Parker Quink Black a lot. And now, said that, we'll go to a bright colored pen with a bright colored ink that I already showed here today, twice. This is kind of an orange color, another orange color, and the ink that is inside this pen is also orange. Now, be aware, because this may be kind of a shock, it's not if you know the kind of ink and the trouble it has sometimes, not a real trouble. The ink that is inside is the Mont Blanc Lucky Orange. It's a special edition for a few years ago. I have not written with this pen for about two weeks. It writes well. It, it is still wet. It seals well. But look at this. This is something that this ink does all the time. It creeps over the nib and get solid like that, like a very nasty and not that beautiful mess, but it it's not really a problem. Uh, you just don't like it, and if you had a, a barrel that could stain, maybe you would not like that to to happen. But if you go with... this, this is dry, but if you had it wet, it will clean very easily. Let me take it out of the nib also. So you see, it cleans easily. You need to wet it. And then you have to clean the inside of the cap also. But this is something that happens with this orange ink. And it happens with other orange inks and some with reddish or copperish colored inks. And this is the Lamy Safari. Attention that this will not ruin your pen. The pen is not clogged, it's not dry, it's just something that ink does. Don't worry, it's just ugly and messy when you put your fingers over the ink. Uh, so this is Lamy Safari, the candy edition for this year, and this is the mango color with a fine nib also. So you can see that I really like fine nibs. And with Mont Blanc. Lucky Orange and it smears a very ugly shade because my finger is dirty because I'm doing this smear with lots of them. So when you see this happening to your pen, don't worry, it's not your pen that's wrong, it's an ink characteristic. Not beautiful, but not serious. And now, we'll keep on Lamy pens, and this is the, another one from the same collection of this year. This is the Lamy Safari Candy, and this is the Violet, with also an F nib that is much, much smoother than the, the other one. And it has Lamy Blue, very simple ink from the ink cartridge that comes with the pen. And let's just do this. 
and I have to say that both these pens were sent to me for review by Fontoplumo. I did the reviews already, so you can check them. And now we'll go to another pen and we change from Germany to the United States again for a very beautiful pen on the outside and I would say for a quite mm, common pen on the inside. This pen was provided to me for review by Apple Boom and this will be sent back because it is a loan and this is the let me check it Esterbrook ST Cobalt Blue this one has a fine nib but I think this has been grounded to something like a stub and the ink it has is the Graf von Faber Castell Violet and this is also, this is also a beautiful violet color it's not as vivid as this Waterman violet but it is a very beautiful kind of dark and discreet violet and from the United States we go to Greece and this is one of the most oops the most extraordinary pens I ever seen this is the Metaxas and Sins and it is made of aluminum with a very strange but strangely comfortable uh, shape so Metaxas and Sins orange and it has another orange ink so lots of orange inks this month and it has the Ervin Orange Soleil I forgot to mention that the nib on this pen I guess it is a fine I think it is not stated on the pen and it writes quite well again the, the smear test is all dirty because of the previous inks I really like this pen it has a big number six box nib and it is unique from Greece we jump just a little jump from Greece to Japan and this is a pen that I think you all know quite well either because you have it or because you have seen in some other channel in the ha in the, the hands of some reviewer and this is the platinum 3776 century black and it has a soft fine nib that should allow you for some line variation with platinum blue and it is a nice pen very classy class classic classic and nice size interesting one and good performer and now we go from the very classy and I would say almost understated pen to a much more flashy pen from Italy and this is a Pinider pen this is the Pinider La Grande Bellezza it was sent to me as a loan by Apple Boom for review and you can see that it is a broad nib and so this is the Pinider La Grande Bellezza and let me check the the color the the name of the color it is black stone stone with a B nib if my handwriting is ugly with normal pens with a 
Brodney pen, it is awful, but the pen is quite nice and has a very nice uh, weight and comfort in writing. And the color it has is Robert Oster Deep Sea. And now, with this smear test and the amount of ink it lays on paper, I will have this black messy thing in all the next ink smears that I may do. Now, let's put this a little bit up. We are reaching the end of the page, not yet the, the, the end of the pens. And let me just arrange a little room here because there are lots of pens here on the side, as you may notice. So, the next one, let me check, will go, will go, no, will stay on Italy. And this is a wonderful pen that I have, it was the first Leonardo pen that I got, and it is a beautiful pen, wonderful material in red, and this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore. The color is Passion. Furore is the, the, the model. Passion Red is the color with a M nib. And it has Leonardo Purple inside. And the nibs on the Leonardo pens are great, and the comfort in writing is wonderful. I'm really a fan of Leonardo pens. I enjoy them a lot. And now we'll go to one of my favorite pens again, another one. Yes, and this is also Leonardo. This is Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande, which means this is the grand, uh, big version of the Momento Zero. And let me do it. The Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande and this color is called Dark Hawaii and it has Leonardo Turchese The nib is an F nib, and this is so wet. And I have to say about the wetness of this nib, I really like it, is because it has an ebonite feed, and I'm finding that having an ebonite feed makes all the difference. And the color of this pen is amazing. The depth, I, I like this so much. And I need to get a sand version of this pen. And from this one, we'll skip to the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero, regular size. Let me just show you, side by side. This one is a little bigger, it has some design differences as the clip, for example, but it is a little bigger and heavier. And it is a piston filler, this one is a cartridge filler, but you can check the reviews that I made. And oops, this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero I read. This one has an, I, an F nib and the color. It is the part that I need to skip this color. Um, I have I need to change the color of this pen because uh, this this part is kind of a nightmare to me. The name of the color is the Ackerman number twenty eight of Quartier Grun. And sorry if I destroyed the Dutch language with my 
way of saying it. And let's go for another Leonardo. This is also a Momento Zero from the regular size. Let me check if I can have it on camera. Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Pietra Marina, also called Sea Stone, which is the same kind of finish, with an M nib and it has the Schiffer Script Turquoise, which is one of my favorite turquoise inks. And this is different material, also a very beautiful one, but this one has three bands on the cap and this one has only two. So just a small change on the looks. Now let's flip the page over and go to, guess what, Leonardo. And here it is. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pen with this yellow. It's called orange, but this is yellow, transparent, with swirls, white, and I, I really enjoy this pen. It is also a very big pen, which is nice, nice to hold, a very good size. And this one is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Messenger. This is a limited edition with an extra fine nib I forgot here the orange and it has let me check the color I can't remember by now it is Waterman South Sea Blue it is a turquoise ink. It looks a little bit darker now because I think it is for a long time on this pen. I have lots of pens to write with, with ink at the same time, so some of them don't get the same use and the ink gets a little bit darker. And from Italy, we will jump to Italy again. And you, what do you see? Just a shiny, very, very black thing. In top of the on top of the paper and this very dark thing is a Tibaldi made in Italy this is a modern pen that has a very beautiful vintage look I really love this pen with a fine nib it's called Tibaldi Perfecta and it has an ebonite feed and I have to say that I'm quite excited with ebonite feeds and let's see it working this is the Tibaldi Perfecta Rich Black. Yes, it's easy to see that the black is very rich. It looks very, very black. With an F nib that has a wonderful flow, so you can really see, even with an F nib, you can see the shading on your inks. With Diamine or Diamine Wagner. This is from the Music Edition and I love this green color. Of course it is contaminated now with the, the blue one from the from before, but this is a beautiful I don't know how to say this is a beautiful it's not an olive green but almost and the pen is just just stunning. I got this from Tibaldi for review and so thank you. Now the next one will be a German pen. And where is it? The pen seems to run away from me. Uh, this is Schneider made in Germany. This is a very simple like a school pen also a broad nib and why do I have some broad nibs with me? Some because I received for review as the Pinider La Grande Beleza that I showed you, that I received from uh, Appleboom. 
and also this one because I just have it and this happens because I'm trying to make some ink reviews also and I started uh, using different size nibs to have more variation for you to compare so sometimes I need to have a broad nib and that, that's why I have broad nib pens working and so this is the Schneider base with a broad nib and the ink is the uh, Jacques Herbin Vert Pré and this is a very bright color. This color was at first in another pen that I'll show you a little bit uh, in a moment but I would do it, uh, it was on that pen to make a review of the pen but then it would be too light to show you for the review so I decided to change it is a nice green but not for a pen review and now we jump again from Italy or from, sorry from Germany to Japan and we have here the pilot pilot metropolitan no this is a pilot let me check the size of the nib it's an M the pilot MR this is an M nib and it has the Pelican 4001 Royal Blue and let me show you it has a Pelican cartridge inside and why does it happen? it takes a Pelican refill because this is the MR it's not the Metropolitan this is a version that is available in Europe a version of the Pilot Metropolitan the same pen but takes international sized cartridges instead of the Pilot proprietary ones and now let's go for another pen that is on top of my preferences which is the Pilot Custom Black Stripes, that's how I call it. It is a beautiful pen. I really enjoy this pen. I think it's from the 70s. I've showed you this review before. Let me check the date code on the nib. Come on, focus. No, the camera doesn't want to focus. Okay, it's from 70... something. I cannot get this to focus properly. I've, I think it's 72. So, pen from the 70s. Beautiful nib. I really like this kind of nibs. And this is the Pilot Costume Black Stripes. And this one has a NAM nib. And the ink in this pen is Pilot Hiroshizuku Yamaguri this is an ink that I received from Apubun also to try and it's quite interesting and what I have to say about this pen is that this pen is amazing writes well very simple made of steel easy to carry very good pen but we go from Pilot Again, to another pilot and this one is amazing I I think it was last video that I showed you the unboxing of this pen this is a pilot elite from the 1960s so it has a very long barrel not the normal barrel of the usual pilot elite or the E95S as someone may call them on the United States it has elite there it is it has this cross edge the sizzle uh, uh, finish that is typical of the Parker 75 and you can see there are some small dings on the on the cap but I think that is unavoidable this is a very old pen it says there sterling silver beautiful pen made of silver and let me uncap it and show you this beautiful nib so this is the Pilot Elite 
and the let's call it long barrel I need to find some more information to classify this pen properly the nib on this pen is a manifold nib which means that is an M nib made for writing in carbon paper so you can do some force on the nib some pressure writing and the ink inside guess what is Parker Quink Black I find this pen to be an amazing pen also to go on my top ever pens really good beautiful with a very big nib this pen is just wonderful by the way let me show you the comparison with the nib of the Pilot Custom that it is more normal this is the same size of the Pilot Elite and you see that the, the one on the on the big Elite is much bigger and let me compare it with for example a number 6 nib on the Leonardo Officina Italiana, Momento Zero Grande, and look, look the comparison of that huge nib. That nib, of course, it has a very different shape and width, so it, it's not easily comparable, but it is of the same kind of length as the nib on a, a Mont Blanc 149, which is amazing. And this pen is wonderful. I predict some trouble on the filling system, so uh, on the future, so I have to be aware of that and start working on some replacement things for that, but I need to do, to do some research, but the pen is amazing. And now we'll go to the last three pens. And one of those is one of that I received from Apple Boom for review. I have to send it back and <laughs> I have to say that I would like to keep this pen, but it is quite expensive, more than 400 euros. And this is a Jacques Herbin Caravel with gold nib, very beautiful pen, made of wood, made of ebony, it doesn't look like, it looks like black resin, but no, it's... Um, ebony and it is very well made very well finished so it's really a very classy pen and this is the Jacques Herbin Caravel ebony with an M nib and the ink is the Parker Quink green and this one has a beautiful nib very good ink flow this is a good pen really really good pen very well made very beautiful I don't have much to complain I have some more inexpensive pens here but I have a couple of very good pens and now for the last two pens we go to one pen that I find amazing, this is a very small Pelican M100, it is one of the smallest, it is the smallest M series Pelican pen. And this pen is very interesting because it's like a, a movie merchandise, it's called the Stormtrooper, and I think you can guess why, because of the black shape and the white, everything that reminds us of the Stormtrooper helmet, mainly and from the Star Wars movies and this is like a piece of merchandise without being an authorized one because it was not meant to be like that it was just a pen that was black and white and people associated that with Stormtrooper so you find Stormtrooper you'll find this pen Pelican never called it Stormtrooper but people made the association so it is interesting how the user's association with something may make a very successful merchandise product and this pen also has a broad nib this is the Pelican M100 let's call it, it's the, the color is black and white or white and black with a broad nib 
and this nib is very very feedbacky not scratchy but very feedbacky i guess that's because it is a uh, it has this black coating and i think the black coating makes that until it wears down enough this is a pen that i just inked with new ink and so i inked it for the first time so it, i'm i'm still working on the nib N not doing a specific work but i'm writing with it so i think it will wear down the the coating on the tip of the nib and it will get less feedback if it has some feedback and it's quite fun to have that feedback and it has the Schiffer. I think you can hear it if I shut down. Schiffer Scrip Turquoise. Also very nice color. I have this because also I made a review of the ink so I needed the broad nib to try it. And finally we have this pen that I like it and I have this inked with the same ink of the Platinum. This is a Sailor 1911L large and I have to... I'm, I think I... it would be interesting to make the review of this one because this is why I received this pen and I have this one in my collection and I thought they are quite similar pens in many aspects and I thought it would be interesting to make a versus video. I only made two videos of one pen, one pen versus another and I think I need to do more. And this is the Sailor. This is the last pen that I have to show you today. The Sailor 1911 Large. This is the black with gold trim. And this one has... A, let me check the nib. I never remember what kind of nib it has. You can see there HM, which means hard medium nib. Different from the, the other one that have a soft fine. This is a hard medium, so don't expect lots of line variation, or may you expect it. That's something that you have to see later in some other video with the same color there, the platinum blue. I inked with the same ink to make a more coherent versus video, but I did not record it yet. I have to do it soon to send the other pen back to Apubum. And this is how it writes, quite dry, but very nice pen with the kind of very sharp feedback that you get from these the sailor pens and so this is all for today i know this was a very long video sometimes on the end of these videos i put lots of pens on top of the table which are the pens that i, re I, I showed you in the video and i have to say that some of my favorite pens and i will be very unfair to some other are maybe these ones and I'm missing one of them these are some amazing pens there are some other that are quite quite good like the Metaxas, the, the Penteo or the very special Caveco Collector's Edition but or my wonderful Parker 45 <laughs> okay Lots of pens are very special here, but I have I have to say that these pens here are really something that are outstanding. And for several different reasons. And all these pens are very, very nice and I've been using them a lot since I got them. This one I got so recently, but I enjoy that so much. So, this is what I had to show you. I'll try to add timestamps to the video description for you to check the pen you want and not have to see the whole very long video. I hope you liked it. 
On the beginning, I mentioned the channels of the Inky Neve and the Little Pen Girl. Check their YouTube channels. Subscribe them. It's important to have new people talking about pens. The more information and opinions, different opinions you have on pens, better for us when we need to find the pens that we really want. Because we have more stuff to be entertained by and some more opinions to know. And now, by the the little pen girl, you can find even some ideas for the first pens for some children, which is quite interesting. It's a very different view. So, don't forget to check them and don't forget to subscribe my channel. It's really important for me also to try to grow more and to do more stuff with pens and it would be a way that I could be able to get more pens through the advertising, there is not much money involved on the advertising videos, on the advertisement that is put on videos, but if some stores know that I do these videos and they are interested in my work, they may send me more pens for trying and to send them back like this one, but this is very good because it will enrich my channel and give you some more ideas to know what you can choose from the pen world. So, this is all I had to show you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and I hope you'll be back soon to hear me again. So, bye.